Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Michael Taylor. I am a remedial project manager for the Environmental Protection Agency in Region 4. I am here today to provide details on EPA's proposed cleanup plan for the Petroleum Products Corporation Superfund site, which I will refer to as the PPC site. The PPC site is in Pembroke Park, Broward County, Florida. I will explain the history of the site, the Superfund process, and how you can comment on our proposed cleanup for this site. Here you will find the contact names and numbers for EPA and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection that are associated with the site. If you need further information after this presentation, we can be reached at the email and phone number provided. As I mentioned, the PPC site is located in Pembroke Park between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. The former facility is located a quarter of a mile west of I-95 off of Pembroke Road. The yellow line in this figure indicates the approximate boundary and the area impacted for this Superfund site. It is approximately seven acres in size. There are multiple warehouses and storage units currently on this property. Two former waste oil sludge pits that have been filled in exist underneath some of these structures. The contaminated soil and sludge has impacted the Biscayne Aquifer, which is a federally designated sole source aquifer. You have heard me mention the term Superfund. What is Superfund? This is a common name used in EPA for the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation and Liability Act, or CERCLA. This is a law that mandates cleanup of hazardous waste sites. EPA Superfund program oversees carrying out these, this responsibility. Superfund includes both removal and remedial actions. The PPC is under a remedial action. This slide shows the Superfund process. Once a site is discovered, the site is evaluated, which consists of a preliminary assessment and site investigation. The site is then scored for listing on the national priority list. The PP site was listed on the NPL in 1987. The next step is to conduct a remedial investigation. We have concluded the remedial investigation feasibility study for the site. Currently, we are at the proposed plan stage. At the conclusion of the proposed plan and comment period, we will make a remedy selection, which will be documented in a record of decision. A design will follow the record of decision, and then we begin imp implementation of the remedial action, which is the physical site activities of treating the soil and groundwater. Once the site actions are completed, the site will move into the maintenance phase. After all site remedial actions and goals are achieved, the site will be deleted from the NPL. Past operations at the facility utilized an acid clay refining process to treat millions of gallons of waste oil received from hundreds of locations. Two waste oil and sludge pits, which include the primary and secondary sludge pit, were used to dispose of spent waste material after treatments. The free product recovery refers to the free floating waste oil on top of the groundwater. Site documents and testimony show that more than 18 million gallons of waste oil was processed at the PPC facility during its operation. Here are two aerial photos of the site that show what the area looked like in 1963 and 1969. The 1963 aerial uh, shows the primary sludge pit location as outlined by the green box. Also pictured is one warehouse building and several above ground storage tanks. The blue outlined area indicates a water body such as a sinkhole or wetland. Uh, there were very few structures or businesses around the area in 1963, as you can see. The 1969 aerial also shows an expanded primary sludge pit outlined in the green. The secondary sludge pit is located to the north of the primary pit. On this slide, the blue lined areas are former sinkholes, wetlands, and ponds. The investigations uh, indicate that all these areas were eventually filled in and graded to allow for construction of storage warehouses that were built in the 1970s and 1980s. If multiple oil spills contributed to oily contaminants negatively impacting the soil and Biscayne Aquifer. These photos show 
some of the above ground storage tanks that were on the property during the facility operation and the conditions that existed. There are obvious spills and releases that occurred as shown by these photographs. Uh, these are photos of Bay 261 at the Pembroke Park Warehouse. Inside this bay, the floor is purposely cut away in order to collect oil and sludge. Bay 261 is cleaned periodically from the lateral and vertical movement of oil. The viscosity of the material ranges from a light machine oil to a heavy crude, often a solid mass that is not readily pumpable. The oil and sludge pits are located underneath some of the warehouses that are located primarily on the south end of the warehouse property. These sludge pits extend to approximately 22, 24 feet below land surface. This is well into the groundwater and the Biscayne Aquifer, which begins at approximately five feet below surface. There is periodic daylighting of oil, which is above uh, ground, the seepage of oil and sludge that seep through the cracks and around foundations of concrete and asphalt. The structures are more than 40 years old with noticeable settling and uneven foundations. The buildings are comprised of concrete foundations uh, and block walls. The initial remedial site investigation began in 1989 in 1990, an interim action rod for Operable Unit 1, which is product recovery, was signed. An oil collection system was established in the early 1990s that was later followed by the installation of a bioslurper unit in the late 1990s. A bioslurping unit is a vacuum-enhanced oil collection system that collected light non-aqueous phase liquids. The bioslurper unit operated until late 2012 during this period, approximately 43,000 gallons of waste oil was collected. Currently, product recovery continues with oil collected manually from existing wells and disposed off-site. It has been estimated that 50,000 to 150,000 gallons of spent material may be impacting the groundwater. The site is located in the cone of influence, for example, groundwater drawdown footprint for the nearby Hallandale well fill. The well field is approximately a half a mile east of the site and supplies water to Broward County residents. The oil and sludge has not impacted the well fields that supply the local drinking water. The buried sludge volume in this area is estimated to be around 50,000 cubic yards. The primary contaminants of concern identified on site are listed here on this slide. Additional constituents are present at lower concentrations that do not add to site risk. For example, we have polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, heavy metals, PCBs, dioxins, and chlorinated compounds in the waste oil, sludges, and soil. The groundwater contains, for example, benzene, multiple chlorinated compounds, uh, PCBs, 1,4-dioxane, and multiple heavy metals such as lead and arsenic. This photo shows some examples of daylighting I mentioned. Uh, this is oil around the warehouse structures and roadways. There's occasional oil seepage at the parking lot and building foundations, as well as around one of our monitoring wells. As you can see, tire tracks where vehicles have driven through a, a seepage area and tracked it along the, the roadway. We have been addressing these seepages as they occur. These seeps are intermittent and do not daylight at the same location every time. Here's an example of the soil and sludge from two sample cores on site. The left photo shows subsurface conditions at different depths. The sample indicates very oily material from ground surface to five feet, and it continues from five feet to 10 feet and starts to get lighter at 10 to 15 feet, where it indicates a more native type of soil. The photo on the right is from another location that is heavily saturated with oil and sludge, but also contains very low pH levels from the sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid was used in this re-refining process. Our investigations show that sludge deposits reach depths of 24 feet below ground surface in some areas. This photo shows how the sludge is bound to the sand and silt below surface. The material will continually leach from the groundwater of the Biscayne Aquifer because contaminants are present beneath the site in the Biscayne Aquifer. There is a potential risk if contamination migrates through groundwater into nearby well fields. The contaminants pose a potential risk to local municipal well fields which draw water from the Biscayne Aquifer and serve as 
well over 50,000 residents. This photo shows the PPC site in relation to the nearby Hallandale Wellfield, which is approximately half a mile east and along I-95. The site is within the cone of influence and the two-foot drawdown of this wellfield system. There is another wellfield located directly north of the site, which is the Hollywood Wellfield. The Hollywood Wellfield is approximately two miles north. A third wellfield, Miramar, is more than two miles away and is located southwest of the site near the Broward and Miami-Dade County line. This slide will give you a conceptual site model of what exists at the site. As you can see, there are two distinct sludge pits, which have been filled in and graded over with the construction of warehouses on top of the waste material. The contaminated soil and sludge continually impact their surroundings and the groundwater from migration of this waste. The PPC site is underlain by a series of carbonate and clastic sedimentary unit typical of marine deposits. The depth to the limestone varies across the site. Groundwater is often perched on the sludge. The surrounding area is highly developed with commercial and light industrial operations. There is also a significant residential area located to the south and west of, the, of this facility. Our remedial action objectives for this site are identified in this slide. Our objective is to minimize the migration of contaminants to protect the Biscayne Aquifer and the drinking water. We want to prevent leaching of contaminants from the subsurface soil and sludge pits to the groundwater. Our objective is to prevent any human exposure to contaminants in the groundwater. These objectives also include the prevention for migration of contaminants in the aquifer. In addition, our objectives include preventing human exposure to contaminants in the surface and subsurface soil on the former facility and the subsurface soil in the Bamboo Mobile Home Park. The basis for action to protect the groundwater comes from CERCLA and the Code of Federal Regulations. There are documented exceedances of the maximum contaminant levels or MCLs in the groundwater for contaminants such as lead, PCBs, volatile, semi-volatile compounds, and PAHs, as I mentioned earlier. The site is within the cone of influence for the nearby Hallandale Wellfield. The Biscayne Aquifer begins at around five feet below surface and is approximately 200 feet deep. Soil contamination and the former sludge pits are impacting this Biscayne Aquifer. EPA conducts baseline risk assessments as part of the remedial process. A Superfund Human Health Risk Assessment estimates the baseline risk. This is an estimate of the likelihood of health problems occurring if no cleanup action were taken at the site. To estimate the baseline risk at a Superfund site, EPA undertakes a four-step process. Step one is analyze the contamination. Step two is estimate exposure. Step three, assess the potential health dangers. And step four, characterize site risk. To address the different contaminated media, EPA broke out the various media into contaminated media zones, or CMZs. A CMZ-1 is for the unsaturated zone, which is the more widespread shallow soil from surface to five feet below ground surface. This area includes approximately 110,000 cubic yards of soil. CMZ-2 is comprised of the main source area, which is essentially the two buried covered sludge pits that extend from five to 24 feet below the ground surface. The volume of material in the CMZ-2 is approximately 50,000 cubic yards. CMZ-1 is outlined with a white dashed line on the slide, while CMZ-2 main source area sludge pits is shown with the red dashed line. This slide shows the third contaminated media zone, which is the extended plume for groundwater contamination. The groundwater has detections for contaminants of concern to a depth of 40 feet below surface. After identifying the areas and media contaminated from the site investigation, EPA will select a treatment remedy for the contaminants. EPA evaluates the different treatment technologies based upon nine criteria. This includes a threshold criteria to determine if the remedy is protective of the public, health, and environment as well as making sure it is compliant with the applicable or relevant and appropriate requirements or ARARs. 
A balancing criteria follows with how effective is the remedy long-term and short-term. How will the remedy be implemented? What is the cost of the remedy? The last two criteria are modifying criteria, which is there state acceptance for the remedy and is there community acceptance. This 30-day comment period uh, will help provide the community an opportunity for evaluating the proposed remedy. The cleanup alternatives were considered for several areas on site. The Bamboo Mobile Home Park is an area south of the former process area that includes a small area of subsurface soil under one mobile home. The area that is impacted is from two to five feet below surface. The contamination is a result of the oily material migrating from the former process area. Cleanup alternatives considered for the contaminated media zone, CMZ1, unsaturated zone, which is the shallow soil, are shown in this slide. A no action to activation, stabilization, solidification, and thermal treatments were considered. This alternative addresses the soil down to approximately five feet below land surface. Cleanup alternatives considered for the CMZ2, which is the main source area, are shown in this slide. A no action to excavation, stabilization, solidification, and thermal treatments were also considered. The main source area is predominantly the buried sludge pits that extend approximately 22, 24 feet below surface. The cleanup alternatives considered for CMZ3, the extended plume in the groundwater, are shown here. A no action, a recovery and treatment system, a carbon injection with permeable barriers to monitor natural attenuation, our alternatives were considered. Since there are multiple contaminants on this site, no one treatment technology will address all the site contaminants. That is why we must evaluate so many technologies that address all contaminants. For all the remedial alternatives considered, there were some common alternatives and areas that remained the same, such as for the one mobile home in the Bamboo Mobile Home Park. This action will involve a very short duration to remediate since there is minimal amount of soil to remove and backfill. It will involve temporary relocation of the occupants in order to move the trailer and access the soil underneath. The excavated soil will be shipped off site to a landfill. The soil will be replaced and the property restored. The second common alternative involves the demolition of five warehouse structures that are on top of the buried sludge pits. These buildings are shown in orange and located along Carolina Street and 31st Avenue. Prior to demolition and off-site disposal of the structure, the, the building occupants and contents in the rental storage buildings and small business areas will need to be moved and relocated. The needs and requirements for the renters and leasing companies in these warehouses will be addressed between EPA, the property owners, and the renters on an individual basis. Keep in mind that no on-site activity will take place until after the design is completed, which is about two years from the record of uh, decision approval. The third common alternative involves a shallow soil excavation from underneath six buildings. These are highlighted in yellow, and the plan is for these structures to remain in place. Now, this slide summarizes the preferred alternatives. One mobile home in the Bamboo Mobile Home Park is proposed to be moved, and the soil underneath will be excavated down to five feet. Backfilling and grading will occur afterwards. The remaining work will be on property that is zoned commercial industrial. Uh, the remedy will include a permanent move or relocation for the impacted tenants in the five warehouses identified for demolition, which are pictured in orange. Demolition of the five structures is required since waste cannot be addressed or treated with the buildings in place. The top two feet of soil, which is pictured in the tan color, will be excavated followed by stabilization and solidification of the remaining subsurface soils. Under the buildings, which are pictured in yellow, five feet of soil will be excavated for off-site disposal and backfilled with a flowable cement-based material. The six yellow highlighted buildings will remain in place and will not be demolished. The final action will include an interim short-term multi-treatment groundwater system to prevent further degradation of the Biscayne Aquifer from the oily soil sludge contaminants. This interim step will help determine if the remedy has a positive impact on groundwater contamination.
Here is a summary of the cost for the alternatives evaluated and recommended. This table includes the common elements, estimated building value, and estimated relocation cost. The projected total cost for the proposed plan is $57.1 million. Now that the proposed plan has been made available, there is a 30-day comment period. After the comment period, EPA will prepare a summary of responses to comments received from the public and place them in the record of decision. A record of decision explains the cleanup and is also targeted to be completed in mid-2021 and will be available online and at the Broward County Public Library. Afterwards, a remedial design will be prepared, which is typically completed in 18 to 24 months, and then the remedial action will begin. EPA will let the public know once the record of decision is signed and before the cleanup begins. Community participation is an important part of the Superfund process. It allows the public and EPA to communicate concerns and issues, as well as provide a process to facilitate the proposed plans and decisions that are made for the site that impacts the community. If you would like to submit a comment on the proposed plan, you can mail, send an email, or call us. Our contact information is on the next slide. This PPC proposed plan is published and you can send comments to us until February 12th. As part of the process in providing the public an opportunity to review documents and information, the administrative record, AR, has been established. The AR can be viewed at the Broward County Public Library and on EPA's website. There is also a significant amount of information on the EPA website for PPC. The admin record in the regional office of EPA in Atlanta is currently unavailable for the public to visit due to the COVID pandemic. I want to thank you for your time and allowing me to present the proposed plan to you.